Welcome to this video. In this video, I'm going to talk to you about a topic that took me an extremely long time to understand, and that is the topic of heart failure. And what I'm hoping to do in this video is talk to you about all the reasons that this topic took me so long to understand, all the misunderstandings that I had along the way, and I'm hoping that if any of the people watching have these same misunderstandings, that they will be cleared up. So, let's begin with the first major lesson of this video, and that lesson is that heart failure is not a diagnosis on its own. Even though people frequently use it as though it is a diagnosis, they will write diagnosis heart failure. I'm guilty of this. Previously, I have just written diagnosis heart failure. Or even worse, they will write it in people's past medical history. Past medical history, heart failure. And won't add any clarification to that. They'll just write heart failure. And I want to explain to you why that is not brilliant, why it leads to huge misunderstandings. That is, I understand why people put it in their past medical history, because it is very important that people be aware of this, especially when we give IV fluids out like Smarties in hospitals. It's very important to uh, be aware of the fact that this person's previously had something wrong with their heart, and that you might want to give IV fluids cautiously because of that. However, it is not good for understanding to just write heart failure as a diagnosis or heart failure as a past medical history, and it leads to huge misunderstanding amongst juniors, and it makes it very difficult to understand this topic as a junior. So, let me elaborate on this further. So, hopefully everyone is aware that this is a picture of a heart here. Let's just label up the basic parts. I'm not actually going to write the labels, but let's just talk about the different bits so that everyone's got it in their head exactly what we're looking at here. So here, this, this is the aorta with the three major branches coming off it. Can I still name these branches? This is the uh, brachiocephalic trunk, this is the left common carotid, and this is the left subclavian. Here is the aortic valve, uh, this is the left ventricle here, uh, the chamber of the left ventricle. Uh, this is the mitral valve connecting the left atrium to the left ventricle. These are the left pul pulmonary veins coming in, and there would obviously be right pulmonary veins on the other side. We can't see them. Um, this is the right ventricle, the right ventricular wall muscle, the pulmonary valve, the pulmonary trunk, the left pulmonary artery, the right pulmonary artery. We have the right atrium over here, the tricuspid valve here, the superior vena cava here, and not shown is the inferior vena cava. So remember, the job of the heart is to take blood from the um, systemic venous system, so from the superior and inferior vena cava, and to move it into the pulmonary arterial system, and then for that to go through the lungs, come back into the pulmonary venous system and then be pumped into the systemic arterial system. So the heart is a pump. It keeps the blood moving around this great system, around the systemic system and the pulmonary system. And it forms obviously one great loop. Heart failure means that the heart is failing to do its job. Its job is to keep the blood moving around this great circle, this great cycle, so if it's failing to do that, if there's not enough flow being generated by the heart for whatever reason, that is heart failure. This should not, however, alone be a diagnosis, because really the diagnosis is whatever disease has led to there not being enough flow around the system. It's like respiratory failure. That means that the lungs are failing to do their job. They are failing to load the blood with oxygen and take away carbon dioxide. However, respiratory failure alone is not a diagnosis, and no one would ever write that just alone as a diagnosis, unless they didn't know what the diagnosis was. Uh, they would write respiratory failure secondary to whatever disease it is of the lung that has caused that respiratory failure. So respiratory failure secondary to COPD, respiratory failure secondary to interstitial lung disease, respiratory failure secondary to pneumonia. Those secondary two bits, those are the actual diagnoses. Those are what you would actually write in someone's past medical history, i.e. that they've got COPD or interstitial lung disease. You wouldn't just write respiratory failure. Um, 
Similarly, for heart failure, it should be heart failure secondary to whatever disease it is that is leading to failure of the heart, failure of enough blood to be going round the great cycle. Um, so heart failure secondary to hypertension, heart failure secondary to aortic stenosis, heart failure secondary to mitral regurgitation, heart failure secondary to ischemic cardiomyopathy, heart failure secondary to pulmonary hypertension, heart failure secondary to etc. These secondary two bits are the diagnoses, the actual diseases that cause the heart to fail. Those are what you should actually, in principle, be writing in people's past medical history. Now, what I do acknowledge is that sometimes it's much more difficult to say the cause of the heart failure. Respiratory failure, it's usually very obvious what has caused it. You know, you can CT scan someone's chest and you see the disease, you see the emphysema, you know that person's got COPD. You see the fibrosis, you know they've got idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis. You see the widespread ground glass changes, you know they've got uh, some form of uh, NSIP, interstitial lung disease. It's sometimes a lot more difficult to say what is the cause of the heart failure, and it may be the case that there are a huge number of different things wrong with the heart that are all together contributing to the heart failure. And that is why people often don't put the secondary to the actual disease in the case of heart failure. But that is not helpful as far as actually learning about this topic and understanding this topic is concerned. And that is one of the reasons I think that it took me so long to understand this, that I used to think that heart failure in itself was a diagnosis. And furthermore, I used to think it meant a specific diagnosis. I used to think it, I used to confuse it with meaning cardiomyopathy. So this is a good word. So I'm going to bring this word up now. We'll use this word later on as well uh, and explore what this means. So this word cardiomyopathy, this is what I think, or at least what I used to think heart failure meant. And I think what quite a few people think heart failure meant means. And it's not the case that it always does mean this. So this, Myopathy, myo means muscle, pathy means disease, cardio means heart, so disease of the heart muscle. Cardiomyopathy means that there's something actually wrong with the heart muscle. So if we talked about LV cardiomyopathy, that would mean left ventricular cardiomyopathy. So it would mean there is something actually wrong with this heart muscle. Uh, it's weak, it actually isn't able to pump, you know, if the heart is failing because of cardiomyopathy of the left ventricle, it means that the left ventricular muscle, there's something wrong with it, and therefore it can't actually pump blood properly anymore. That's what I used to think heart failure meant, that if you had heart failure, it meant that your heart muscle was actually weak. But that is not necessarily the case. There could be loads of other reasons that that blood is not flowing around the body properly. It's not necessarily a problem with the actual muscle itself. So that's another misunderstanding I had for a very long time. I used to think that when someone wrote heart failure in, their past me in the person's past medical history, it meant that that person had cardiomyopathy, that their heart muscle was weak for whatever reason. And sometimes it is the case that people have cardiomyopathy and that's the reason, you know, that's irreversible. If you've got cardiomyopathy, we can't reverse that unless you have a heart transplant. But who gets a heart transplant? No one. Uh, unless you're very, very young, you're not going to get a heart transplant. Um, so if you've got cardiomyopathy, you've got irreversible heart failure. However, some people will have heart failure for a variety of other reasons. And those other reasons might be valvulopathies, diseases of the valves, and we can replace their valves uh, and their heart may then function perfectly afterwards. So it's very important to not have that misunderstanding of thinking that everyone with a diagnosis of heart failure actually has a cardiomyopathy. Um, it might just be that they have, have something that can actually be reversed, and that's important. Right. Um, so there's the main first lesson. Uh, one final thing that I want to talk about is the terms left heart failure and right heart failure. So what colour shall I do these in? Blue, I think. So I'll just abbreviate them down. Left heart failure and right heart failure. Now these are not actually particularly useful terms because the reality is this is a great cycle. It's one great loop. So it doesn't really help to split the heart into the right and left sides because they're still part of the same great big system. What I mean by that is, you know, if if 
Okay, let me, let me go backwards, because I feel like I'm doing a bad job of explaining this. So let's say that the problem is on the left side of the heart. Let's say someone has got aortic stenosis, so narrowing of the aortic valve, and we'll talk about causes of heart failure in the next video, and we'll go into this in more detail. But let's say the aortic valve is stenotic, so it's not opening properly, and the left ventricle can't pump enough blood out because of that. That would be an example of left heart failure. All this means is that the problem is on the left side of the heart, and this just means that the problem is more on the right side of the heart. However, remember the whole thing is a system, so if the left ventricle is not moving enough blood, then the right ventricle will also not be able to move enough blood, because after all, it has to. it's a great big cycle, so you can't have one bit moving more blood than the other bit. The flow all the way around has to be equal, so... Remember that, that it's a great big cycle, and really what heart failure just means is that not, there's not enough flow around the cycle. So I just want to like draw a little picture of this, uh, uh, an actual circle. So remember the, oh, what is that? That's not what I meant to do. Ugh. So a great big cycle, like so. So we'll have the left ventricle here. This is the systemic arterial system, and I'm making up these abbreviations. SAS is not something we would use for systemic arterial system, but never mind. That goes into the systemic venous system. This goes into the right atrium, which goes into the right ventricle, which goes into the pulmonary arterial system, which goes into the pulmonary venous system, which goes into the left atrium, which goes into the left ventricles. It's one great big cycle, and the flow all the way around has to be the same. So really what heart failure means is that the flow around this great big system is too low because the heart, there's some sort of issue with the heart. So when we say left heart failure, all that means is that the heart failure is due to a problem on the left side. So it's something over here that's going wrong. If we talk about right heart failure, all that means is heart failure, i.e. too low flow around this system, and the problem is in the right side. So it's something over here that is the problem. That's all those terms mean. Don't think that it means, you know, that the left ventricle isn't pumping enough and the right ventricle is pumping a normal amount if you've got left heart failure, because that's not the way it works. It's one great big system. The flow has to be the same. So if the cardiac output from the left ventricle is too low, the cardiac output from the right ventricle has to match that. It ha the flow has to be the same. So don't think that this just means left output is too low output is going to be low on both sides because they both have to be equal. All this means is that the fundamental problem is on the left side of the heart, whereas this means that the fundamental problem is on the right side of the heart. Uh, that's another misunderstanding that I have for a huge amount. I used to, I think, think that left heart failure meant that the left output was too low, but that the right output was normal. And of course, that's not right. The output, the cardiac output from the left ventricle has to be the same as the cardiac output from the right ventricle. Otherwise, there's a mismatch that isn't, it has to, you know, the flow all the way around has to be the same. Um, and I, again, I used to think that right heart failure meant that the right cardiac output would be uh, low, but the left cardiac output would be normal. Again, that's not that's not possible. The flow has to be the same all around. And that's why really this is a good term. These, these aren't really necessary, these terms. Heart failure is a fine term because it just means that this system is failing. There's not enough flow around this system. All these terms do is they add on, they say, where is the actual fundamental problem? And this tells us that the fundamental thing that's causing the flow around the system to be too low is in the left heart. And this tells us that the fundamental thing is in the right heart. Thank you. So we will have a break there. Uh, I'll catch my breath. And in the next video, uh, we will talk about causes of heart failure.